Welcome to Project Dad Life, and today on the channel we are finally going to get our welder wired up with some high amp wire. And of course I will list all the products I use down below and we will show you exactly how to do it. This 220 setup should be about as easy as it gets. It's very simple and here's all the parts that we're going to be using. We have a 40 amp breaker that has the specifications required for our welder if you stay within the 40% duty cycle. So we're going to be installing this to run our welder off of. Our welder is gonna be plugged into this three prong receiver that is gonna be mounted into this receptacle box. This receptacle box will be mounted close or at or above our welding table location. And this male corresponding plug will be hardwired onto our actual welder coming out of the back. To connect these two or to get the wires to the box where we're going, we can't leave them exposed. So we're gonna run them inside a three quarter inch conduit pipe. Now this is just some 90 degree bins that they sell. And then they also sell the 10 foot sticks, which was what we got. We're gonna run it up from our sub panel across the ceiling or the wall and then come down and hopefully it'll land perfectly above our welding table. They do have these collars that will accept this PVC pipe perfectly above your um, panel box. We will secure the conduit to the walls and ceiling with these half circle rings. Once all the conduit is secured where it needs to go, we will try and suck a string through this conduit so we can pull our wire through the conduit to its location. We are using a eight gauge copper stranded wire. We have white and green. I will label it accordingly. The reason I don't have any black is because this was left over from our well pump job and this stuff is so expensive right now. So I have this stuff for free. Like I said, I will label the hots accordingly with electrical tape at the box and then at the landing location. With that being said, let's get started on this project. So we got the panel cover off. We got the power turned off at our main box. So we're just going to test it now to make sure we have no power in this at all. Appears we are good. So I want my conduit running up about right here so it clears this little beam. So these little pieces in here you can actually just get some pliers and just punch them out with a hammer or twist them, a screwdriver, whatever. And these little covers come out and then you can slide your corresponding coupler right into the top and secure it to your panel. So here's our first piece of conduit. We just measured from the panel to about where I think the first bend is gonna go. It was right at 65 inches to get me to the ceiling. So now I'm just gonna use some PVC pipe cutters. We will cut this thing to length. And see if this gets us where we need to be. Step back and check it. All right, let's get to cutting this conduit right down the wall. I'm at the last bin on the pipe I'm about to install. <laughs> Why? This crap is always harder than it seems. I looked at it, I'm like, oh, run the conduit, pull the wire through, it'll be super easy, it'll take me like an hour. Well, I'm in like the third hour of this project, guys. But as you can see, let's see if we can get a better picture. And another thing I didn't think about was killing the power to the shop and having no lights. So we got our power box right there. It goes straight up to the wall right here, kicks around, this back wall goes all the way across the top of this back wall right here. That was my last pipe I just put in. So if you can see behind me, right back here is where I'm going to have the welding table, pretty much under this window. So what I'm going to do is go straight up. I'm going to put a 90 right there. I'm going to bring this wire down and put a, you know, like about a table height plug on it mounted to the wall right there. And that way, you just saw that? Yeah. Okay, listen. Hey, come here for a second. Come here. Yeah. 
Can you say hi? Hi. All right. So I'm gonna bring it to about right there on top of that wall and come straight down and that way it'll kind of be on the right side of my welding table. And I do have a nice like, uh, I think it's like a six or four gauge, 25 foot welding uh, extension cable pretty much. So I'm gonna mount it right there on the wall and then that should reach everything in the shop I need to pull 220 off of for a welder, um, MIG welder, stick welder, anything like that. <gasps> Easy peasy, back at it. It'll be mounted. We are ready to pull wire now. I didn't pre run the wire in the pipe because I'm going to actually suck a string through the pipe first and then we will tape up our wire and hopefully pull it through. And I got this little bag that the receptacle came in for the power. So what you wanna do, you wanna kinda of make like a, a little piece of plastic, just something to kinda of take up the space. Now they, that, I think they have like cotton balls for this in all reality, but if you do something kinda of small enough, hey, you always gotta have a plan. This is our plan. I just realized it'll probably be a lot easier to put this receptacle box on last. That way my shop vac, oh, I got this little powered shop vac. I'm just gonna hold it right here on this pipe and hopefully that string will come right out. I'm thinking that the tube for the shop vac will fit tight over this conduit and I can just leave it here, turn it on, run over to the panel and feed the string through. That is a plan, that's what we're gonna try. You can feel the suction right there. So put our string in, make sure it doesn't get in knots. There it goes. So I came over and pulled the vacuum off the pipe and there you go, the string came all the way through. No problem at all. So now we'll go back over to the panel, get our wires ready to pull, tape them up, pull them through. So here's my three wires I'm pulling through. Like I said, these other ones I had, I had a lot of this green. So I'm gonna use these two greens as my hot. I will label it um, correspondingly in the panel and then in the receptacle box, and my white will be my ground. So what I'm gonna do now is take these up a little bit, and I'm gonna leave them kind of staggered, that way they pull through the pipe a little bit easier, and I can fold one over to hook it onto the electrical tape. And then I got my other string on the other end. I just tied into a loop. So I will take this loop and put it over the wire. And when that string is tight on the base, I will continue and wrap a couple times with the electrical wire, or electrical tape, I mean. I will snip this off as scrap when we get to the other end, but get some pliers and kind of squeeze that fold down pretty good on the white one. So it's pointed. And I mean, this isn't rocket science. This is just kind of what I've seen real electricians do. <laughs> and so I'm just kind of copying them. And that extra loop and that wire that you fold back over it, number one, it uh, keeps all the wire staggered. Number two, if that string slips off, it can't come completely off the line because you have a hook on there. So that should be pretty good. So I'm gonna go on the other end, start pulling, and I'll feed this up in there, and then hopefully just, it'll go in pretty easy. So I tried to pull it by myself. This is definitely a two-man job. So I put a reservation in with the wife. She's out here, she's gonna pull the string while I feed the wires from the other side. So babe, you pull this string right here out of this pipe. So don't uh -huh. pull the pipe off the wall, yeah. just kind of pull it down and I'll feed the wires in on this side. Okay. You good? Uh -huh. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, pull. Look, we're like professional electricians right now. You got it? Holy crap, pulled out like uh, 12 inches. 
<laughs> that was all the green cable I had. Ooh, that was close. Yeah, that was super close. We made it. We got like 12 inches pulled out of that end and check this out where I landed on this wire. I'm gonna have like two extra feet of this wire. So that worked out perfectly. Here's receptacle wiring up. As you can see on the back, it has two hot and one ground. Your gold screws are always gonna be your hot or black and then your um, ground is always gonna be your green. In this case, we're using our two green as hot and our white as ground. Because we are doing that, we're gonna go ahead and identify these greens as power. So I'll run a strip of electrical tape on them. I'm kinda of curious as the uh, YouTube electrician world if they're gonna blow up because I'm using these as power or is that something that's common? And now we'll go ahead and strip these wires. I am missing some green electrical tape, but I'll come back later and add that. So these are secured. So now I'm gonna place my receptacle back in the box and I'll probably just do a little half bend in there or a little 90. And that way the slack will just kind of fold inside there as clean as possible. Just like that, the receptacle is done. So we're back at our panel. Here's the wires that we pulled through. There's a couple things we're gonna to wanna to do in here. Number one is kind of get your wires routed exactly where you want them. Again, my white is my ground. So this is going to my ground bar. So I will cut that to like a rough, more manageable length. And I will do the same thing with my power wires. Those are gonna go to a 40 amp breaker that's gonna be right here on these two, these two spots. So they'll go down here and then turn up. And then I'm gonna get my black electrical tape and I will try and identify these greens as power almost the whole way down or a pretty good portion of the wire. I don't think it has to be super neat, but as long as a big chunk of it is black, you should be good to go. And this is a 40 amp breaker for our panel. There are a couple different brands, but I just got the brand. I got the same brand as the panel is. So it should clip right in and they only go in one way. So you'll have this little um, catching mechanism right here that I actually catch on this little lever. You can see there's like a little raised up uh, piece of metal that'll go in right here. And then when you press it down, the contacts will actually receive it on these bars. And that's where the power transfers through right there. So you wanna make sure these are lined up. But if you get it right, there's only one way to put it in. So I'll hook it on the left side. And then we simply just push down where it says on and it will set into the panel. And then if you want to take it off, if you simply put the breaker in the off position and then pull this back, it'll pop right back out. First, we'll run our ground because I like to run all my grounds on the far or as deep in the panel as I can go because I know the grounds are okay to touch the back of the panel case. So that's why I have them running first. And in my experience, that's usually how I see most electricians run their panel. So they'll you know, put the, all the grounds in first, bury them in the back of the panel. And that way the, um, if it, you know, touches the case, if there's any kind of like friction or something like that, or one of the wires uh, wears, wears through to the copper, it'll be fine. And a lot of your grounds are bare copper anyway. Ground wires installed. Now I will run my power wires and those will run on the front side of the case. So I'll do those the same way, bend my 90s, kind of do a hard bend in the 90, and then I'll do another hard bend 90 going into the, the breaker. And I will insert the wire into the breaker and tighten it up. So the first hot wire is complete, and we will run our second hot wire the same way.
and it is complete. So here's the 40 amp breaker to give you guys a close up. That is what we installed. And then you have your two hot wires coming out the back. They are identified as hot with the black electrical tape. They run up and out our conduit that we installed all the way to the welder receptacle. The ground runs on the back side and it runs to the isolated uh, ground bar for our sub panel. And that is complete. Super simple, you know, I like to put these pre-bends in here and try and keep the panel as neat as possible. You know, you can see all the grounds are tucked to the back of the panel. And then I try to keep the power wires kind of, you know, floating, free floating, I guess, in the panel without touching or rubbing any of the case. And then my common wires come in on the right side on my common bar. The panel is back on and powered up. We have our electrical tester. We will test the power coming in. We do have power coming in. And then here's the 40 amp breaker we installed. We will test that. The two legs going out and they are hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill the power on the sub panel again, install the panel cover, secure all this, and then we'll go check the receptacle. That is it. Power back on. Everything is hot and secure. And back at our welding receptacle, we will test it. All right, success. All right, so here's our Synchrowave Miller 180 SD. I've had this welder for about um, almost 20 years now. As you can see, it definitely needs some attention. It is dusty, it's grimy, it's pretty nasty. So I think we're gonna clean it first before we go powering it up. Um, here's a three prong uh, 50 amp plug. We're gonna wire up on this. I was gonna do that today and plug it in, but I kinda wanna take care of it first. I wanna pull the cover off. It's been so good to me for so long. I wanna pull the cover off and go through it, dust it out, make sure the wires are good. I'd hate to plug it in and fire it up and it just starts smoking. So I think we're gonna do that next week or maybe the week after, get this thing cleaned up and really give it a good, you know, maybe waxing and wash and get all that stuff, take care of it. So that being said, all we got left to do is wire up this plug. That project was pretty simple. If I had to rate it on difficulty, I would say it was probably about a seven. The conduit was a little bit tough to run by myself. If you had a partner or a, a bigger ladder, even scaffolding, that would definitely make it a lot easier. But pulling the wire through the conduit was super easy. That went way easier than I thought it would. Well, with that being said, thank you guys for watching on this week's project and we will see you next week. God bless and I hope you guys have a great week. Walter, you want to say bye? Bye. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Take it easy.